We just made these three little tiny houses <laughs> that we're gonna bring to a workshop where we can't use any tools. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do it to do it, build it or make it. So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're back into the tiny house game. We're building more tiny houses, but not for the prairie. For home decor <laughs> reasons. So last week we did our round, our front door round with our tiny bird houses. This week I want to do some home decor houses. They're just little houses. They're not bird houses this time. And they're going to be standing for tabletop de decor. And I'm doing this for a workshop we have coming up. So for this workshop we we didn't want to bring a round. We wanted to bring a home decor item, but we didn't want to do a farmhouse build. We didn't want to actually use power tools and build a frame. So we're going to do the a version of the tiny houses that we did last year. This is what I was talking about last week. But we're going to do this with no tools. No tools. Well, well, we have to use tools, but no tools to the end and a builder uh, well and for a workshop yeah for the workshop attendee or the workshop participant it will be a no tools project for them Thank uh, you. yes step one we're gonna make our design well we already made our design and we did our prototyping but we got a lot of questions last week about how I made those little tiny houses and this design is pretty easy so I'm gonna slow it down go step by step on exactly how I made these houses this week. All right, back over to Illustrator. That's my graphics go-to, especially when I'm making SVGs. I'm just gonna open a regular template. This is my go-to template. And we're gonna double click on fill. Let's pick a brownish color. It's a good brown. All right, over to the rectangle tool. And then we're gonna hold shift and we're gonna draw a, a uniform box right over to properties. To get here, you would go to windows, properties. My property window box is open. We're gonna make this, oh, before we do that, let's make sure the maintain width and height proportions is clicked. Well, click it now, make it 10 by 10. Now let's click it. All right, over to the selection tool. We're gonna control C, copy. Control V paste. Now we're gonna come over here to one of the nodes on the corner. And then we get the little rotation cursor. We're gonna hold shift and we're gonna click it 45 degrees. Boop. Holding shift makes it snap on every 45s. And let's drag it up into place. Oh, back over to properties. Let's make it 10 inches wide. Boom. We're gonna drag it up in place and it'll snap in the intersection. And if it's not snapping, you can come up to the view down at the bottom, snap to point. Right, we're gonna select the bottom one and the top one by holding shift. Boop. Then we're gonna go to window, pathfinder, and we're gonna unite these. Boom, now it's all one object. All right, so our house is done. Let's make some roof pieces. Back over to the rectangle tool. We're just gonna draw some kind of rectangle. And go over to the properties. We're gonna make this 0.24, it's quarter inch-ish. That's what my MDF is. We'll unselect maintain width and height. And then we'll make the height like eight inches. We'll see what that is. Copy, Control C, Paste, Control V. Back over to the selection tool. We're gonna move this over to this side of the house. Come up to one of the nodes, get that rotate cursor, hold Shift, snap it on the 45. Let's do the other one. Hold Shift, snap it on the 45. Let's move them into place. Now one is going to be the top piece of the roof and the other one's gonna be the quote unquote bottom piece of the roof. All right, we'll just use our arrow tools to scooch it up in place. Control space bar will give us the magnifying glass. Click. All right, it looks like it's pretty good. All right, let's back back out. Control space bar alt. We'll zoom out, click. 
All right, now let's draw an alignment box to make sure the roof is aligned. So a rectangle tool, we're gonna draw a little box. Go back over to the selection tool. We're gonna drag this box up to the bottom of this left side over here. And then we'll come over here to the right side and we'll select the right side of the roof. Then we'll go up to the direct selection tool or control A. Now let's zoom in. So control space bar, click. Now with the direct selection tool, we're gonna select one of the nodes, then hold shift, select another node. Now let go of shift and start to drag it. Click it and start to drag it. Now we're gonna hold shift again, which will snap it back to its original angle. Now we'll let go of click. All right, it's all aligned. There, they're even, right? Pretty good. All right, let's zoom out. Control, spacebar, alt, click. Oops. All right, let's move this little alignment box out of the way. And then we'll move the roof over here, both roof pieces. We'll get the rotate cursor, hold shift, snap it vertical. Let's do the other one. Snap it vertical, boop, boop. All right, we'll select one, go over to properties, make sure the maintain width and height proportions is off. And we're gonna make this roof 1.25 inches, inch and a quarter. This roof is gonna lay flat. So we don't want it little sticks, we want it to look like a roof. So we'll make both pieces 1.25 inches, one and a quarter. All right, looks good. Let's give this thing a base. So remember that alignment box? Well, now it's a base. So let's go over to the properties. We'll just say 11 inches wide and three inches tall. Let's control C, copy, control V, paste. Let's grab this one, line it up down here with the other one. And we'll make this one as wide as the house. This will be the slot that the house will slide into. So we'll make this 10 inches wide. And then our MDF is 0.24 inches wide. We'll select both boxes, holding shift, or just drag your cursor over and select both. Center, center. All right, that's base. But you know what? I want to make sure it stands straight up. So I'm going to go back to my rectangle tool. Make another rectangle, but this is going to be a one inch by one inch rectangle. So hold shift about an inch. Go to properties, maintain width and height proportions. We'll say one inch, bam. I'm gonna make this the little tab that will go in the back and kind of hold it upright. So let's select it again. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. We gotta make a slot for this thing to go in. So it's gonna be like a T. So we'll line it up at the bottom of the slot for the house. Over to properties. Unselect maintain width and height proportions and we'll make this 0.24 quarter inch All right, let's select them all and make sure they're aligned center Deselect it grab just The little slot for the little T slot and make sure it snaps up against the bottom slot for the house And we'll select them all and we'll control G to group it or Object group. All right, base is done. It's looking a little bland though. So let's give it a saying. So one of the sayings that Kim picked out. I already have an SVG. So we'll drag this SVG over. It opens in a new window. Control A to select everything. And then Let's group it before we copy it over. So control G to group it. Now control C to copy. Back over to our original tab. Control, control V to paste. Now before we do anything, let's go ahead and check the maintained width and height proportions. And we'll make this nine inches wide. Bam. All right, let's drag it into place. We'll select that and the house, and we'll center it. 
Oh, already centered. I'm good. Let's select it again. Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Drag this over here. Now we're going to make these over here on the left. That's our words that's going to pop off the sign and really make it stand out. So we'll lose the fill. So the fill is none. And then we'll give it a stroke of red that's going to be cut. We'll select the house. We'll give this a fill of none and a stroke of red for cut. We'll select the words inside the house and we'll give this a fill of none. And this gets a stroke of blue. That's gonna be our score. So I don't have to guess where I'm gonna put all these little letters. I'm gonna score it so I'll know where to put them. All right, let's select the other pieces. No fill. And we'll give them a red stroke. Red's always my cut stroke. All right, still looking a little plain up here. It needs a window or something. So back over to our rectangle tool. Let's select a brown color. I'll have to give it a fill. Swatches back to a brown color. Let's draw a rectangle in the shape-ish of a window. All right, looks good. Now over to the rectangle tool, we're gonna hold down the little corner to select our ellipse tool. We're gonna hold the shift key to draw a uniform circle. All right, over to the selection tool. Let's check the properties. Main maintain width and height. We'll make this 1.5 inches wide. And then now let's make this rectangle 1.5 inches wide. We'll drag the circle until it intersects and snaps. We'll select them both. We'll go to Window, Pathfinder, Unite. All right, looks like a boring window though. So let's go over to our ellipse tool. We'll hold it down to get our rectangle tool or control M. We're gonna draw a little rectangle down the middle. There you go. Use our selection tool. Then we'll copy paste. Drag it up. Let's turn it to the side. Boop, boop. Holding shift. It'll stop on the 45, so we'll stop at 90. I'm just making a window pane, so somewhere in the middle. Copy paste. Control C, Control V. Somewhere in here. Alright, those look like good window panes. Down a little bit further. Alright, we'll select all of these little cross pieces. And then we're gonna go back to the Pathfinder window and we'll unite these, make them all one piece. Now we'll select that back arch also and come back to the Pathfinder window. And now we're gonna do a minus front. Boom. Well, hold on. Control Z, Control Z. Everything's ungrouped. We'll select it all. Select it all. Make sure it's center. Okay. Now we'll select the three pieces again. Select these three pieces. Back to the Pathfinder window. Unite. Now we're going to select the arch also. Now, minus front. Now we got a window. Well, it's still selected. Let's lose the fill. Make sure it has a red stroke. All right. Now it should be grouped. That's grouped. Now let's select all of it. Select all of it. Align center. Looks good. Control G to group it. Control G. All right. There's our house. Done and done. We'll export this as an SVG. We'll just call this Chaos House. Chaos House. Export. Okay, let's jump over to Glowforge. I'm gonna create, upload from file, select Chaos House. Bam, it's in there, let's zoom out, zoom out. We're selecting thick draft board because we're using quarter inch MDF. 
Now this part right here, we're gonna select this layer and make this layer a score. I can't really tell, so let's control A to select everything. You can hold shift here also and it'll stop on the 45s. Boom, boom, slide it up into place. All right, looks good, see? It's got the score, it's got the cuts. Gonna cut a little window, score the words, cut the words over here. Let me go turn this thing on. This thing isn't even online. Step two, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. They're all right here. We just needed some quarter inch MDF, some paint, stain, and a glue. This is the Starbond glue. We like the gel stuff. This is uh, the thick, pretty good. But medium works well too. Like 15 seconds. Good to go. That is my favorite glue so far. <laughs> Quick and painless. Well, not painless. I get it on my fingers a lot. Sometimes your fingers get stuck together. <laughs> And we're going to use a pretty easy co uh, color scheme with our country chic paints here. We're going to use licorice. And crinoline. And then I'm going to do for it so that one house is going to be black, one house is going to be white. And then the third house, I want to add a little color. Garrett's trying to make it, yeah, hot pink. And I was hot like, that's pink. not what we're doing. We're trying to keep with the farmhouse theme. So we're going to use a little technique where we're going to lay down some cobblestone and do a top coat of nightfall which is a gray and so again it's going to keep with a kind of that farmhouse muted color scheme and so we'll show you this te technique when we get there i think the third house should actually be a glow in the dark <laughs> yes, I'm sure you do think that. And then we're going to show uh, something we haven't done before is how to use stain on MDF. Well, it's, there's no new technique there, yeah. but you wouldn't typically think you can use stain on MDF, but you can, and it looks great. So I'm going to, again, try and keep that same farmhouse, some tiny house look, um, but using it the MDF and the stain. Oh, the stain. We could use the unicorn spit and make it pop. Yeah, I know you want to make it glitter and red and Not glitter. blue. It's got to stand yeah, out. Yeah, he just loves all that. He loves bright colors. <laughs> I miss the 80s. <laughs> Step three, we're going to make all of our cuts. I'm going to take the quarter inch MDF over to the Glowforge, pop it in, pop out some three tiny houses, and I'll be right back. <laughs> Like I said, these are going to be pretty simple. We're going to do one with a base of black, one with a base of white, and one, actually I think I'm going to do, this one's going to be white, and the medium sized one is going to have that two layer cobblestone and nightfall. That like rustic look. Yes, I'm trying to keep the farmhouse colors, Garrett. This isn't going to be your Margaritaville set. <laughs> hey. My little town would be a party town. <laughs> yeah, yes, true, true. All right, and I thought maybe you could start with just staining. You got gloves over there? Yeah. We're gonna use this Varathane uh, wood stain in Roanoke, and you can and just the stain all the roofs and the bases with um, this, this stain. Okay. Should be pretty simple. I'm the stainer. You're the painter. Be the stainer. Be the stainer. Be the stain. <laughs> hold on. Let me let me hold this up first because I want you to see. Like I almost don't want to paint it because I'm loving this cobblestone. Is that what we used, right? Yeah, cobblestone. cobblestone. I love this color. I don't think I've used it before, but I love it with the black and the white. But like I said, I said I was going to use Nightfall, so we're going to give it a top coat of the blue and just have the cobblestone peek through. All right, so we're just going to use a dry brush technique. We want some short bristles stiff bristles and then I'm going to jam around on the table kind of spread them out and make it all messed up so don't use a new brush. Oh, that looks good. 
has a lot of yellow in it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is a lot of yellow. So this brush is not new. Alright, I got my brush all crusty looking. Sideways? Yep, I want swipes. Alright, I'm just gently letting it rest on the on the board. I'm not putting any pressure. It's just the pressure from the brush. Now we assemble. We're gonna use this Star Bond super glue stuff. It's like 15 seconds and it's there forever. That's what I love about it. <laughs> All right, we'll start with the easy one first. We'll start with the big one, the we, big HME. We can barely see the score marks, but it's plenty for just trying to lay down the Glue it in the base. Yeah, I mean, I don't think we're gonna take it back apart again. It's meant to be that way. Right, we'll just slide it in the base. Put the little thing behind here. Well, well we should paint the back black, but we won't right. do that for now. I think so. Yeah. All right, here. Let me glue this piece. One of these roof pieces is like a quarter inch bigger than the other piece because they're a quarter inch thick. So that's the top. We're just going to glue it like this. they'd be easy enough to bring to the uh, craft workshop and knock them out in two hours with some socializing yeah definitely yeah definitely you can do it if you only did two of them it would be even less time this was a really quick and easy project it was totally easy did you guys enjoy the illustrator tutorial do you want a little more illustrator tutorials let me know hit me in the comments down below let me know what you're looking for in the comments down below more paint techniques, more Illustrator, Photoshop, sublimation, let us know. But you know what? We're about out of time, so we gotta go. <laughs> so, big thank you to our patrons. We love you guys. And if you aren't joining us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. More hard things. You know what that means? Two. One on top of the other one. Oh no, no, not two different hands. I'd never be able to do two different hands. That'd be too hard. But house on house. Oh, house on house. Can we go house on house on house? I think that's pushing it. <laughs>